Path Traveler, um, Loom Block Game 3. Um, I'd like to give a very specific shout out before I even do anything else, and that is to Star Smiley, who is another amazing woman runner of this game, who originally was going to commentate with me. However, um, we had some problems with her mic. Um, wasn't able to get a working one before the event, like anticipated. So can't join me on mic, unfortunately. Uh, but to help, instead, I now have Frozen Flygon. Hi, everyone! Uh, so this category, this character is eight different characters, each with four chapters apiece. And a single story aims to complete a specific character's uh, first chapter, or fourth chapter. And I chose Ophelia for this marathon because, well, her run's my favorite. So uh, with that being said, I'm all ready to get started. So I'm going to go in three, two, one, go. Uh, first thing I'm going to point out here is I'm playing on uh, Due to loading times and some lag in menus, it's technically slower. However, my PC isn't very good, so I can't stream the Switch version. Um, the, lo the first load, though, was still pretty fast, and that's because I booted up a save file um, on this profile before, and then went back to the title screen before the run. So that made the first load, like, five seconds faster. Um, so this is a JRPG, and each character has a path action. Um, in a path action, you can do different things with NPCs. Uh, Ophelia can guide them, which is somewhat useful, because what guiding does is it lets, um, it lets us summon an NPC into battle once we get into those. Um, but for now, we're just going to be going through opening story stuff. So, it's not too much going on. Uh, I guess, if not too much going on, I can talk about some basics in the run. So, as I mentioned uh, earlier, there's four chapters per character. The first character you pick, the credits play after their chapter four. So, the timer finishes on the credits starting. Um... And we can't have all eight main characters in our party at once. So we can only have up to four in a party at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to be uh, recruiting three other characters instead of getting all of them. And then just beating Ophelia's story with those characters tagging along. Um, but here we have we're access to our first dungeon of the game. Each chapter has a dungeon attached to it. Uh, but before I did that, I bought a weapon upgrade with Quartz Rod. And I also bought, um, or I also guided this tavern patron so that I can summon him into battle later. And speaking of battle, uh, we're now getting into those. And uh, there's a lot that goes on in battle. So the first thing you see here is breaking. And with breaking, um, each enemy has shield points um, and weaknesses. If you hit an enemy with its uh, weakness, it loses a shield point, and when it's out of shield points, it will break. Um, and then when in break, it ha it, the enemy will lose the rest of their turn, um, if they have more in their turn, lose all of their next turn, and also be at uh, half defense, so they'll take double damage to things. Also, if we're in a wild encounter, um, or just like a normal encounter, and every enemy in the encounter is broken, I am guaranteed which is pretty useful. A lot of enemies in this part of the game are weak to things that Ophelia can use. However, the animation for her light magic is very long. So light magic and not staff, which is her main weapon type. I'm going to opt to try and run myself. Um, but with all that talk on breaking, there's also boosting, which you might notice in the top right near our health and our name, there's these little circles, and those are boost points. Um, we get a boost point back for every turn we do not use one. And um, we can use up to three in one turn, store up to five max, in order to make our attack stronger. Uh, here I'm going to make sure I'm at full health, because I'm about to go into this boss. Uh, so boost points are very good on boss fights, because um, you can do more damage with them. Uh, getting into the first boss, though, which is the Guardian of the Flame, Ophelia's story is that... Like, her sister is preparing to go on a religious pilgrimage, 
Um, but then their father gets suddenly ill. And since Ophelia is technically not like a birth daughter of the bishop, um, Ophelia decides to let her sister take care of their father while she goes on the pilgrimage. So she's getting the flame that she needs to bring to the three churches right now. And this thing is guarding it. Uh, so our summon NPC can do two things right now. Um, each NPC usually has like a two or three summon in battle. Um, and it's an equal chance what they'll do. So this guy is basically a coin flip on whether he'll attack with a staff or do this wins attack. We're hoping for this wins attack as much as possible because um, the big guy here is weak to win and summon wins does three shields. It hits three times, so it'll take three shield points off and that'll get him broken quicker so we can do the max amount of damage possible. Quicker. Um, and since I got good luck here, the boss is going to die right now. Uh, nice kill. Yeah. Fun fact about that kill, uh, that enemy that spawns with the boss, this is one of the only, this might be the only boss in the game that can have enemies alongside it that insta-die as soon as the boss dies. All the others, you can kill the boss and then have to deal with the enemies on the side. After. Um, that guy, though, is just a, the wisp that the guy summoned is just like a countdown to a very strong attack. And what you saw actually a lot in that fight was a mechanic where a summoned NPC can take hits for you. Um, so you just don't have to deal with getting damage. And I got it a decent chunk of times there, which is cool. I didn't have to worry about healing mid-fight. Um, however, based on the strength of the attack that a, an NPC will do um, and how much they get hit, they can flee from battle sooner, making you resummon. Uh, so it can be kind of annoying to watch that uh, battle more or have to resummon an NPC instead of doing something else with it. Um, but once I'm done with my character's first chapter, I have essentially free reign to the rest of the game here. I can choose any party members I want, any order. I can go basically anywhere as long as I can, you know, deal with the enemies, which we don't like grinding very much in this game, so. Uh, we're gonna do what we can do to uh, deal with the enemies in our own special way. Um, but for now, we don't have that special way, so we just have to run to the town of Atlas Dam, which is our next stop, and hope that these frogs don't kill me. Uh, every encounter you get into, by the time you reach the turn of the encounter, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance. And even if you don't flee in that, like, 1.01 chance, um, you're guaranteed flee on turn 5. So... Hopefully it won't get that bad, considering we're higher level than the enemies here. So fleeing is usually pretty generous, although I'll still break some gates. If I can, like that pig, who is a big meanie. A pig meanie. Um, <laughs> we made it to Atlas Stand, though. Um, and... I guess I'll talk about path actions here in a bit because our second character has a lot to do in the way of path actions for the course of the But do you want to talk about the character in general? Because I know you're a big fan of Cyrus here. Yes, Cyrus was the first character that I chose. Um, so Cyrus is a scholar. He has a lot of magic-based attacks, which is super useful because they hit everyone and they're really good for breaking. Yeah. Um, also, he's a huge nerd, which I love. Yes, absolutely. So, a lot of the magic attacks we'll be getting later in the game will hit twice, which is good for shields, and again, it hits everybody, which is great. Um, on top of that, uh, Cyrus has Scrutinize, which is an ability where you can get an, N like an NPC to give you information. Uh, we mostly use it to find hidden items on the overworld. Um, what I was getting a lot of there are called Soul Stones, which are... If you've played a JRPG, you might be used to what Soul Stones are. It's just your kind of general, like, stone that you can throw out, and it does a specific type of magic damage to everybody on the field. There's, you know, Fire Soul Stones, Ice Soul Stones. Um, there's six types of magic in this game and six different weapon types, leading to a total of 12 different things that an enemy can speak to. Um, oh, 
Did I? I might have forgotten something here. So let's let's just see what Cyrus does here. I did forget something here. Um, so on top of getting all the items that I was supposed to out of that, uh, out of the NPCs in that town, I was also supposed to buy Cyrus. Uh, which I unfortunately neglected to do. So I'm just gonna fast travel back to the town. Once you visit an area, you have free rights to fast travel um, to it. Basically, as long as the game allows you to fast travel. Not really a time the game doesn't. Unlike most games, you're able to fast travel from within dungeons, which is really nice. Oh yeah, and that's really nice too. Um, which it's what I did right there. Um, I'm not allowed out of this town until I finish off chapter Cyrus's first boss here. I was able to skip all the story parts of the chapter, but I do have to fight the first chapter boss in order to mm. um, leave the town with Cyrus. Uh, these sentinels are though, I guess it's all right because I do need to kill these guys. Um, each of them give five JP per encounter and I need, I need to defend there. I need, 10 JP on Cyrus um, by the time I fight the boss. Uh, JP is different from EXP. JP is job points, and instead of, you know, working towards level ups, what JP does is it is what lets you teach skills in this game. So that's going to be very important. Our level doesn't really matter. However, that's because we're going to be using a certain set of skills. Uh, since Cyrus has that JP at this point, we be breaking and running from everything here until we get to the boss. Mm -hmm. Which I'm getting kind of bad encounter luck in here. Um, this game, uh, you, we've already seen a JRPG at the beginning of the Final Fantasy 2. This game is no stranger to the step counter, which I hope you like that mm -hmm. word because you'll be hearing it a lot during this marathon. Um, so there's a certain amount of steps that you can take before you get into an encounter. And it can be mean. Um, but now we're in Russell, which is also mean. Um, the thing with Russell is that he is also weak to wind. So we have to rely on our good friend, the Tavern Patron, just like we did for the first um, And just kind of pray that he uses summon winds. Um, which, as you can tell, that is not. Uh, so the strategy of this fight is we're going to try and get rid of a uh, good old uh, the bubbles in the back. The good old bubbles, I guess. Um, and try not to die, which I'm currently in the middle of doing. Cyrus is already very low on this right now. And one of the bubbles didn't die, so Cyrus could. Never mind. Um, this fight is Again, very annoying due to the uh, bubbles. Uh, some, not only the bubbles, sometimes not, but the luck of wins guy. If he doesn't break Russell fast enough, you won't get maximum amount, amounts of damage on your soul stones when you use them. Um, which we want to use them in this fight. All of the that we. I got a medium one. I'm gonna be saving the medium one for. Uh, something after this dungeon. No, some decent luck on summon wins here, which is nice. Yeah, finally, a little bit later into the, the fight. We're... And I'm doing a very weird strategy on this, but it's... We're gonna need to resummon him and get another break in. Mm -hmm. uh, but with both the bubble <laughs> Boosting is that it lets you attack again, so you saw Ophelia attack twice with her staff just then. So it increases yeah. damage that lets you attack again with the base attack, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, and... Yeah, like, magic attacks get amplified, but... Um, attacks like physical attacks get just, like, doubled or tripled or quadrupled. Um, and something about the summon wins guy is that, uh, since we have, uh both the bubbles dead, even if he does the staff attack, he still hits Sire, or he still hits Russell for a shield. So we're eventually able to break very easily after the first break in that fight, and Russell's down. Um, very unfortunate that fight wasn't good, and I made a mistake of forgetting the Quartz Rod um, on Cyrus before that dungeon, but uh, we still made it out alive. And with 30 JP, we can teach a skill. Um, the first skill that you teach a character, uh, 
for their job only cost 30 JP. So we're going to be teaching Lightning Blast to Cyrus here. Um, now we have all three types of magic that we can get, Fire, Ice, and Thunder. And we are going to... And Lightning in particular is good for what we're doing. So, as I mentioned, a lot of this game is open to me, as long as like we're strong enough to deal with the enemies in that area. Um, there's an alternative to this, and this is the hypothetical of what if we just didn't get encounters. Um, once you teach enough skills to a character, um, they start getting support skills, which are basically like passives. Uh, they can either like help you in battle, or they can be not battle related, uh, but help you like on the overworld or something. And those are all important. Um, because they very much change the way that your character works. Um, in particular, the first one that you get from the Scholar is called Evasive Maneuver. And that makes the numbers rolled by the step counter much higher. So you saw me kill that encounter because that's a very heavy encounter to find in Atlas Dam Flats. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into a place that can easily kill us and also easily not give us enough JP. So... <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, kill it. We can do this. Yeah. Uh, so the strategy here is to go to Thistlewood, which is a side dungeon just near Atlas Dam Flats, and pick up a little bit of money from it, but also pick up uh, a lot of JP so that we can hire help instantly. Like as you might notice right now, after counter, I have 25 JP, and I need 100. Uh, you don't need to kill any extra encounters to get to that 100. Uh, because what my plan was, I kind of want to show off what it looks like in normally in runs, what you're looking for when in Whistlewood. Uh, but if I don't get it within three tries, I'm just going to uh, take whatever I get. Fortunately, this set of bugs is actually exactly what I want. So I can use the medium soul stone, which I scrutinized from someone in Atlas Dam, and I'm out of there with enough JP to teach myself Blizzard, the second scholar skill I want in this run, and uh, that will give me evasive maneuvers as well. So now our movement through the world map is strengthened extremely uh, due to the fact that we can go much longer distances with counter. Um, of course, some of the first screens we do with evasive maneuvers, we're going to be moving to tide coast soon, are some of the longer screens in the game, so I'm probably going to get an encounter regardless, but like, here you can see how far I'm walking without an encounter is something that I could not have done beforehand. Um, but now we're kind of in a long peg. With evasive maneuvers in our uh, skill set, we're able to move to a lot of places on the map without getting an encounter, and therefore it doesn't matter that we're extremely underleveled. Um, that allows us to go into high-level areas and take high-level gear and items and loot um, with no consequences, essentially. Uh, this is resource management that if you were doing a casual file would... But since I'm only using the save file for um, one purpose, and that is these four chapters, I'm gonna be, like, very loose on what I do with my money just to get what I want. Um, and there I'm tagging Ripple Tide to be able to fast travel there later. It's going to be useful for a future party member. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep moving. And I've actually made it through Ripple Tide screens without an That is pretty rare. Yeah, no problem. Great job. <laughs> After Russell, my luck started turning around. I got first try Whistlewood, which like, only like three or four of, I want to say, eight or nine and work for the amount of JP you need. And, oh, I surprised my foe, by the way. Oh, uh, that's something that hasn't happened yet. You can surprise your If I surprise my foe, um, the first turn of the battle where the, uh, the enemy doesn't move is a guaranteed flee. So, uh... I'm gonna just do it. Uh, 
Uh, but here's Cobblestone. Another town that we're going to be tagging for later. Um, we're not going to be picking up the party member that's in this town. You might have seen the guy with the green text bubble over his head. Um, green in this game indicates main character stuff. So, like, on the mini-map, if you see something green, that's where the main story is to go. Or if you see someone green on the over, there's something involving the main story at that point in time. Uh, so... Main story means any of the eight main characters. Mm. We need Cyrus for evasive maneuvers. What are we getting the other two party members for? Well, this is where it kind of... Uh... It differs from route to route. Every route um, has a few of the same strategies, just to some things in this game, more OP and others. Uh, but some routes have more uh, more uses for some characters than others. So, for example, Therian. Uh, if you're a big of fan of Therian the Thief, he's not in this run. However, he's a very useful character because the Thief class has a very good skill um, that lowers enemy defense. And also, Therian has the special ability of... Uh, pick lock, which means that he can open, he's the only character in the game that can open purple chest. Mm -hmm. um, some characters, their job is good, like for example, Iris as the scholar, it's very good to have him. Or Tressa as the merchant, which we'll be picking up later. Speaking of merchant, I'm actually going to be picking up the merchant shrine soon. Um, you can pick up all the jobs that a character has as a side job and give that to a different character. And the merchant is very OP, so I'm going to be going here and in order to get over here without an encounter, you saw me save at a save point and then quit out to the main title. Um, that is to reset the step counter. Um, so that I don't get an encounter here, because this area is 20 or 30 something, and we're level 6. Um, you, I think you can tell how that one would go. <laughs> but here we have the merchant job, so... We can make a character that isn't Tressa a merchant. I really like how this game does jobs. It's like, you know, a character is bound to a specific job, but you can give them a second one. Um, some are more useful yeah. than others. Job as I mentioned with the merchant. Them, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, what you were at, uh, what you mentioned, every run has like a different ensemble of party members just because each one has different uses. Um, Ophelia and Alfin are the two characters who do not appear in any other single story run, not including their own story, obviously. So, this run is actually the only single story you'll see Ophelia in, and it's because it's her story. <laughs> Alfin used to be used in a lot of routes, but, um, because he can do, uh, like, full party, like, healing, and full party, like, and it's very easy for him to cause status effects, uh, but those were routed out and replaced with just pure ability to mess stuff up. Mm. So now we're going to actually, I tagged a town um, where Ophelia's Chapter 3 takes place, and now what I'm doing is I'm in a Ring 3 town, which is where final chapters take place. Um, so the gear I'm going to be getting in uh, this part of the game, in this area of the game, is very good. However, I'm at very high risk of death if I take too many steps. Specifically here, I'm going to try and make it from that screen to the save point on the middle of the screen without getting an encounter. And I messed up there. I didn't get that chest from the side because I was too low. So I'm probably going to get an encounter here. No, I didn't. Okay. Pleasant surprise. There we go. <laughs> Pleasant surprise. Um, one thing I didn't mention, I mentioned resetting the step counter. Another way you can do it is uh, the game auto saves every screen transition. So if a screen has a different name or danger level um, than the previous screen you were on, um, the screen transition will reset your step count as well. Um, I mentioned those specific things and not don't just say every, every screen transition because a mansion doesn't have that level. So you have to like auto, look, like quit and load your autosave once you get to the screen transition in a mansion, which are usually the only dungeons with two um, screens to them. 
Ophelia doesn't have any mansions in her room. We don't have to worry about that, but it is a light. Uh, but now that we've made it to Grand Port, which is going to be very good for looting later, um, we're going to go and get our third member, Tressa. Um, she's a merchant on base, so that's already the best class in the game. Every care, every single story run gets Tressa. Uh, she is arguably the best character in a run because it's faster to go to Ripple Tide than to go to that shrine, that merchant shrine. And even still, six of the eight single story runs get the merchant shrine and run with two merchants. Primrose and Therian, the fastest routes do not. Uh, but merchants are very good um, for something we'll get into around the time we fight Ophelia's second chapter boss, which we're still a ways away from doing, actually. It works out because Tressa is my favorite character, so it's great to see her in all the runs. I can't pick a favorite. <laughs> uh, but here, we're in Tressa's first chapter, so just like with Cyrus, we can skip all Tressa's first chapter. Uh, but we do have to go through uh, the first dungeon and boss. Um, and the dungeon boss here is Mick and Matt, who are uh, two pirates. So we fight two bosses. However, to compensate, the game gives them, like, less health. Um, however, if you were to combine their health bar and make them one boss, it would be, like, the average chapter one boss health. Um, and actually, chapter one scale based on the number of party members you have, one through uh, so, even if we fight Mick and Mac third, um, we can still one-shot these guys with... I've used a small soul stone and a medium soul stone. Now it's time to introduce uh, the large soul stone. There we go. So, something I didn't mention about damage is... I mentioned that when an enemy is broken, they take double damage. If an enemy is not broken, but they are weak to something, they will take 1.3 times damage, or 130% um, as much damage as a normal attack. So, uh, if I use a Wind Soul Stone there, both enemies, both bosses, instead of taking 2,700 damage, will take 3,509. Um, and that's enough to kill both of the bosses right there. So now we have Tressa in our party, and... We're not going to get our fourth character just yet. We're going to do a little bit more prep. Uh, we're going to go back to the stone guard area that we got on the coast from earlier and then go a different path to get a different set of loot. And then we're going to go get our fourth party member. Now that we have our merchant, it's super important that we get a ton of money. Yes. Um, the merchant's path action is that they can... Uh, purchase items from NPCs. And a lot of NPCs sell really good items, like soul stones, uh, that we could just take for like $5,000. Or leaves, technically, is the currency, I guess. So that's going to be useful, specifically for Grandport, um, that town that I went to and then left, like all the way to the east. Um, once I get my last character, there's another path action we're going to get. And uh, those two characters are going to be very useful in getting me good stuff from that town. Uh, but since the route takes me there before we get those characters, I can't do everything I want with the town immediately. But we're very close to our fourth character. I just need to go into this shrine and then go to the town where they live. Um... So this shrine, the Shrine of the Rune Blade, I mentioned that there are the eight jobs we get as secret. Um, we don't get any secret jobs because they have very strong bosses attached to them that would kill us. Uh, the danger level for these areas are stronger than the danger levels in, like, Chapter 4 bosses. So, yeah, they would murder us. However, this shrine, uh, tucked in the back little corner there, has 50k leaves, and that's kind of really good. <laughs> so we do take a detour to go get that as well as a few soul stones you might have seen um, but now we're going to be on our way to our fourth party member 
I've put like 70 hours into this game and I still haven't beaten all of the secret shrines. So oh, yeah, no, my casual file for this game that. was at like 85 hours or something when I went to. We couldn't take on any of those with this party right now. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, actually, no, you're right. I was going to say, well, technically, like full game round, do some secret job um, where you do every main story, but like. I think the route for main stories is you have you still have to be at like level twenty two or twenty three to not die. Right. To the boss that you do first, which is the sorcerer, which everybody gets first out of the four secret job. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is Primrose. She's a dancer, and she seems like a weird character to bring with you in a speed run. It doesn't seem like she'd bring much to the table, and quite honestly, in terms of skills, she doesn't. Um, however, what she does have is one of the quickest chapter ones to go through. Um, her chapter one boss is the weakest out of the four, no matter what, like, what scale they're on. And also, uh, as you can see, we're already at the boss fight past the dungeon. Um, and she does have, so usually there's two stories that get her for the sake of having a quick fourth character. However, there is something specifically with the dancer that is useful. And that's going to go into kind of a little bit of path action theory here. So there are two types of characters in the game. There's a noble character and a rogue character. A noble character's um, path action is guaranteed to work, but it's level based. So like, for example, Ophelia has an 100% to guide any character that she attempts to guide as long as she's of level. Rogue characters, it's a percentage-based whether they're able to have action to work on a character, but they can do it on any character in the game. As you get to higher level, the chance the percentages will grow higher to accommodate for the fact. However, we can technically get very high level like path actions to work on uh, us level four dancer here. So Allure is the rogue version and we can use it to get this character. As I just mentioned with that menu, we are level 8 on Aphilia, and she usually needs to be level 20 to allure that character right there. Uh, I got that first try, by the way, and it's a 30% that to was get awesome. that. So that's <laughs> cool. I didn't have to talk about reputation. I guess I can talk about reputation while including this town, though. Um, if you fail five rogue path actions in one town, you will lose your reputation, and you need to pay the bartender. Um, to get it back. We don't have the money to pay the bartender kind of tight as is, so if that happens, I'll just have to load an autosave, but uh, fortunately, I didn't need to do that there. There's one other 30 path action that I'll have to deal with later. Uh, but that woman is, we can summon into battle, and she has a 33% chance to use inhibit defense, which is a three-turn defense down on every enemy in a battle. And usually the thief, um, you get a thief and they can use armor corrosive, which um, can armor down a single enemy for two turns. Um, however, going to the Clifflands, which is the region north of where I am right now, is very... It's a detour just to get either a job shrine or a character that is so far out of the way. Um, so Primrose is just quicker to get, but that means in every boss battle, we're going to have to rely on, like, a 33% chance happening within a span of, like, three turns in order to get the optimal boss fight pack. It's not run killing if we don't get a defense down, like, optimally we will get a defense down. Um, I unfortunately just managed to not make this screen encounterless and then get caught by surprise here. So, I might die, uh, because these enemies are strong. They're level 20-something, level 8. Um, so, if I die here, I'll probably just do a safety uh, screen transition to reset the step counter, like, halfway through this screen. Because, uh, yeah, it's turn 3, and I still didn't mm. get the runaway, so game's just going to kill us. I like to call this one the marathon screen because I swear to goodness I only get the encounter there during marathon runs. I've done one previous, yeah. and by that I mean I've only gotten that encounter once in the past half a year, and it was during a marathon run. 
So this is officially the marathon screen. Uh, but yeah, the apothecary shrine here, and we can use it to reset our set. The screen mm -hmm. wants to be mean, so I'll just use it. And that'll essentially guarantee. And I guess, actually, someone's probably thinking in chat, or not, but I'd like to think someone is, because I'm going to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, in some games, when you're walking compared to running, um, you can take more steps before getting an encounter. That's actually true for this game. If you don't have evasive maneuvers equipped, once you get mm -hmm. equipped evasive maneuvers on anybody in your party, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter if you're walking or running. Um, you can move the same amount of distance. So it's not like walking the past couple of steps of a screen will save me if I'm not confident in my movement because the step counter will progress the same way. Um, but here we're in Aphelia's chapter two. We already did to do with town, light the torch in the uh, in the cathedral. However, we noticed on our way out that these kids are bullying this one kid because this one kid lost something. So we're going to help them find that lost something. And I got the other 30% path action the first try. Uh, so this guy, he doesn't give us a uh, item, but he gives us new weapons in the shop, which is going to be very important for after we fight the boss here. So basically in this chapter, this kid is upset because another kid lost their mother's brooch. And since their mother is dead, that brooch is the last thing that uh, they have for their mother. Um, so we're going to go... We saw him bullying another the kid that lost it. We're going to go try and show this kid that uh, the kid being bullied is trying their hardest to find it. Talk about our childhood a bit because we had a fun childhood. Ophelia time. Um, and then we're going to see a wolf with the brooch run away into the forest. And the two idiot kids are going to run away into the dangerous forest. So we now have to go save the kids from the forest. <laughs> um, this chapter is not a very strong one. A lot of people consider Ophelia's first two chapters some of the weaker in the game. However, the third chapter really picks up in the story and becomes like a great story. Uh, so I can't wait to explain that one. For now, we have to save some who decided to run off in a creepy forest. Here I'm gonna just reload my save to not get an encounter on the screen. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, but you might have noticed, some dungeons have tra trails leading up to the dungeon, or like, um, and then some don't. You just get directly into the dungeon. So this one has a path to it, so we have to go on the Mirkwood Trail before getting in the Mirkwood, um, where the giant wolf ran away to. And a fun fact about dungeons, if you follow the torches, you will get to where you need to go in the dungeon. It would have helped me a lot when I was going through my playthrough, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that until I started running the game, and I was like, hmm, I'm getting... Many I'm like, follow it's the torches. Helpful. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Um, so here for a little bit of EXP, actually, um, I'm going to kill this encounter. And I'm killing this, again, for EXP. We're going to level up, like, twice. Some characters that have been slacking behind because after going up to level 8, um, when they were previously, like, 5 and 4. And I'm going to do some skill learning now. Um, Aphilius is going to become my second merchant and learn Donate BP and Hired Help, and then Cress is... Uh, hired Help... Hired Help is a big one. So what Hired Help is, is there five different tiers of people that you can pay money to deal damage for you. Um, so it uses money instead of like SP or something else. And the reason that's important is because the top tier, um, which is uh, the veterans tier, the veteran soldiers, is 30k. So it, you're not expected to use it until like way later in the game. Um, However, it does a lot of damage because of that, and because of how much money it costs. So, 
I'm gonna be using that later in this fight. And you'll see how good it is. Um, I'm gonna throw a soul stone here because I need to do... Uh, we can kind of have our luck be a little bit better if this woman... She can inhibit in defense and she can attack. And the third thing that she has in her move list is Flurry, which is a lot of arrows going... Uh, but this is veteran soldiers. As you can see, yeah, that's a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And that's the giant wolf. That money so we can abuse the hired help. Yeah. Like, we have over 100k entering that fight, and we use 30k. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, if this was- like, if we did this run, and then used this vial as a casual vial for the other series, the- the- like, we have a lot of money we can't get back. Uh, that we would have really liked to use. However, since, you know, we're only using the save file for four bosses, really, uh, we can save a lot of money. Or we can use a lot of money in- on smart ways. This is not smart spending. Or it's very smart spending, depending on how you want to look at it. But with that chapter done, all you need for yeah, this run. With that chapter done, um, I'm going to go to this shop. Uh, if you remember, I scrutinized to get extra weapons in the shop. Um, so what I got with that is armor that lets uh, two characters survive something later in the game. And then I bought empowering bracelets um, with the new weapons in the shop. Um, and what empowering bracelets do is um, they increase your max HP by 500, and each character can have two kind of, like, accessories on them at a time. So I buy eight, uh, empowering bracelets there, and then get, uh, two on each character, and suddenly each character has added 1,000 to their max HP. Um, that's very good, because, uh, Philia goes directly into Saints Bridge for her chapter. <laughs> And that's the only town where you can get that that easily. So, um, we're gonna be able to actually fight the next two bosses of her story with those. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a lot of like that's not just I'm doing a lot of like while well, I'm in this town because I need to go basically the long way through the whole town. So I'm just getting a lot of good items for the last two bosses here. So in this chapter, we make it to the town, and this bishop is very stressed. And then there's this kid that is afraid of the bishop. Um, basically, what's going on here is the bishop gave or got a letter from this little kid, um, and that is why the bishop's stressed out. Um, so the little kid thinks it's his fault. Um, so we're going to go help the kid apologize and then figure out what's going on. Like, why the letter is stressing out the bishop. And the reason why is where the story kind of begins to pick up. So, we're going to talk to the bishop with the child. And we're going to learn that the letter was a hostage note that the two guys took his daughter. And what they want as ransom isn't money. Um, it is the flame that we are bringing to the... Um, this is the chapter where... I'm going the wrong This is the chapter where we start to learn about the Savior, who claims to kind of have the power of gods, claims that God is fake, and is getting people to stop believing in the gods, um, and starting a cult, essentially, to worship a sealed-away god of darkness. It's a cult. Basically, someone is starting a cult, and they want to use the sacred flame of Elfric, who is the god of the flame, basically, that protects the continent of Orstra, and turn it into a dark flame of Galdera to cause chaos across the world. And we're like, that's really metal? But no thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna go beat up the kidnappers. And this is Matthias, by the way, this guy in the green. We don't need to talk to him. He does have the scene that I mentioned. No longer believing in the churches. Um, he is the merchant that, in Chapter 1, originally came to give Liana, uh, who's Ophelia's sister, gear, to go on the uh, pilgrimage that we're currently on. 
So he's an important character in the story because he is helpful to us. Yeah, he's helpful to us. I was trying to come up with a joke about that, but I can't really. He is. Uh, we're in the Seaside Grotto now, though, which is where the letters... Uh, technically, we're bringing the flame to him because we're the one carrying it. However, we're gonna kick his butt. So... Quit out here for that step counter. Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. Well, not reminding me to do it, but reminding me to mention it. You did it! <laughs> I did it! Yeah, no, I did you it. it. You saw it happen. There's more so. flames in here. I'm still shook by the flames being the right path. <laughs> yeah. Um... So this is Mystery Man and Shady Fig. Um, it's two bosses at once. So we're going to deal with this in a pretty interesting way. Uh, the top guy, Mystery Man, actually only attacks once right on turn two. Meanwhile, Shady Figure attacks twice, and one of those attacks is healed. Um, so you think it might be good to have uh, Shady Figure be broken immediately. Actually, Mystery the big danger, because on turn two he does an attack that uh, is strong enough to just kill a party member on the spot, even with all of our HP upgrades. So we're going to be breaking him first by using bandits here. Um, I haven't talked about pomegranates yet, but when I was in Grand Force, I bought a lot of those. Pomegranates are very good items where they instantly give you BP instead of having to wait turns for it. So we can use it to use max boost to break these guys quicker than waiting three turns and then just using a bunch of skills. So here, well, waiting two turns, um, we did get Aphilia to four B or to three BP. So we can, uh, with Sh uh, Mystery Man broken, also break Shady Figure. And now I'm going to. Throw some soul stones. I'm getting a lot of flurries, so looking at my soul stone counter. What is it at right now? It's at three. I'm actually gonna see if I can. Uh, because I got two flurries in a row, which should null one set of soul stone damage. If it doesn't, I could die. Uh, but I'm not dying here. So yeah, that's just some good luck saving me an item. This fight. Mm -hmm. That fight went pretty smoothly. Uh, so now we're going to... This is where Aphilia's story comes best in the game. Uh, so bear with me here, because as if the elevation of suddenly, like, a cult starting to form, um, our sister comes to us to inform us that our father has died. Um, and then, you know, goes to have a chat with us to wind down after everything happened. During that chat, she gives us a drink that she actually drugged with a sleep weed so that we'd fall asleep. And during that sleep, she takes the flame from us because the savior has some about how there was like, they used to be like, were, like they used to, you know, be a messenger of the church, but there was a great town um, or there was a great fire in the town and they prayed and prayed for the, uh, for everyone to be okay, but nobody was. Um, so that's why they stopped believing in God. But someone's, like, burn and, like, damage from the burns, like, miraculously healed while the, while the Savior was holding them. Which is where he gained the impression that he can save lives and start his cult, basically. Um, and Liana falls fool to this, basically, and steals our sacred flame um, to see if the Savior can help bring back um, our father. And so now we have to go get our flame back before the savior releases darkness on the world. Well, you know? Yeah. That yeah, escalated quickly from helping some stop being boys. Pacing thing. It's important. This is a great story, though. Like, 
complains about pacing aside. Mess with death, I totally agree. That's pretty pretty standard across the board. Yeah. Uh, so we're on our way to Whisper Mill now, which chapter takes place. Um, there's the enemy. That's probably the farthest I've ever gotten on the screen. You might have noticed I did a guide to them, uh, because these enemies are weak to bow. Um, and well, this woman has a 33% chance to do a uh, flurry to instantly break the encounter. She also took a hit from there. How cool. Um, she, uh, the woman I guided with Philia has a 50. So, uh, that being said, please flurry. Please. Or at this point, they're not even moving last. So if you don't want flurry to... So yeah, that way, they like to lower offense. So, um, that way they won't hurt us a lot. And then we can just run away from the encounter once they're both broken. Uh, the screen is too long to not get that encounter in the level five area at like level 15. So we don't want to deal with that. Oh. Uh, that's a long load. Um, I'm in chapter four now, though. Philia's final chapter of the game. Uh, Whisper Mill is the location of Savior's Antic. Um, so we're going to try it and get our flame back here. First, though, I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff I've gotten throughout the run to get more money. Um, and I'm very good on money. Okay. I'm very good on money. We're aiming to get around 90,000. We got plenty. We're chilling. Yeah. You usually, uh, because of press as a skill, her, like, special ability, like how Cyrus has Study Foe to give us a weakness. Oh, by the way, that merchant guy that I mentioned all good news is actually the savior and is not good news. Little plot twist. Yeah. Um, I met earlier becoming the bad guy. He's also hot as hell, as you'll see when we get to his battle. Um, <laughs> I say this as someone who isn't into guys. <laughs> Hot as hell. Sad you're not able to hear the travel banter because that was some of my favorite parts of this game. Was oh yeah, the travel banter is great. Um, I'm moving the wrong way in this dungeon. I didn't trust the which is uh, but basically deep in the ebony grotto after having Liana break us out of prison um, is where uh, the ritual's happening to bring Baldera into the world. Um, and so Liana's not actually getting her father back if this ritual works. Um, it's just kind of to trick her and to get it, because, like, it was kind of to trick her, because Mat hey, Matthias was like, hey, this is probably a good way to get the Sacred Flame. Um, so he's, like, hardcore using Liana, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we need to go talk about bonds of friendship and a dead bird. Um, to talk about how death is permanent and we have to, you know, help each other. And I don't really understand, but I mean, this guy's dialogue is the theme. So, you know. Um, Get ready for that, that text in the chat. Well, I'm gonna skip Wait, it, but like, if there's some people in the chat, namely if there's Jello Knife in the chat, uh, you might see the battle dialogue uh, that this boss has. But before we get to that boss, we actually have uh, this run in with a couple of enemies. They can kill us if they keep using their most powerful attack, so hopefully they will not keep e oh, they're using their most powerful attack, right? Okay, yeah, they, that's them, them using their most powerful <laughs> See, someone in the chat starting the dialogue. This is, this is exciting stuff. Are you sure it's a dialogue? Do you see the words, uh, spout all the like? I spout all the pretty words. Yep, yeah. there you go! They're already doing it. Even though you skip it. Chat will all be caught up on what's going on. Oh, we haven't gotten to it yet, because I died. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers? He says, spout all the pretty words you The truth. <laughs> Liana will never know the happiness she once did. Um, Primrose missed there. Um, you usually just see- Oh my goodness! The danger of going into these final bosses super under level, you know, yeah. sometimes this happens. Sometimes this happens. Um, I guess it's a good time to point out that the mercenaries lowest tier higher help. Um, a lot of, um, a few of the, uh, thingies, the mercenaries and the dancers higher help 
Dancers can afflict like any. I'm just gonna save after getting this money, so I don't have to get it again after reload. Um, the dancers can uh, afflict, like give you any the enemy any status element. However, the mercenaries up your physical defense once used, and the turns that is in effect for is dependent on uh, how boosted it is. So, especially if I get a merchant moving before. The game usually likes to have somebody move first that's not the enemy in non-bosses. There we go. If Primrose's dagger hits there, I don't have to watch two animations, because that front guy is also weak to dagger, so instead of watching the back guy's break and then the front guy break, fine. Um, but okay, I have them all broken, so I can just throw soul stones at them. It just doesn't feel like hitting right now. You know, it's all right. It's yeah, so, there we go. And I still have one large soul stone for the uh, upcoming boss. So yeah, now I'm gonna skip a few more cutscenes, and we're gonna actually get the final boss. The great part about leveling up there, everyone maxes out their health and their magic. It's awesome. Yes, that's very good. Stay hydrated. Uh, so this is Matthias. As you can see, we got that X pose going. And there's the dialogue. Here we are. Um, so this fight um, can play very differently depending on when we get an inhibit defense. So if nobody dies to these two attacks, we have a perfect fight. Uh, hit Tressa, hit Tressa. That's not Tressa. We don't have a perfect fight. It's fine though. So I'm gonna break him immediately uh, with the veterans there, and I'm just gonna work on getting some life back up right now. Oh, that's a good flurry there. Um, the reason why we buy healing items fight is because uh, with the layout of it, uh, we can afford to have him broken up to three times during the fight. And since the defense is still down, I'm actually going to take So we need to get in, like, 15 veterans during the course of the and I've gotten in, like, three. Or, no, I haven't. I've gotten in seven. So I'm going to move into the second break with, like, half of his HP down right now. Uh, so this is why we bought Charm Robes, by the way. So that Cyrus and Primrose can survive. Okay. And right now I'm just kind of trying to get him broken again. This is a fight that... If you have a character die turn one, doesn't have like a super consistent strategy to it. So I'm just trying to play by ear here and see if I can't stay alive. Um, I could finish the fight just like right now if I get an inhibit defense. That's not an inhibit defense. Um, but I can do, I'm gonna do this here. And I could throw out the rest of my soul stones now, I guess, because I still do need to. Um, I also need to heal at some point with, with one of these next three characters. I'll just do that now so I don't forget. Uh, so that I can survive one more Dark Gale. I'm not getting fantastic luck right now. Uh, but we'll see what happens right now. Please give me what I want, woman. Nope. I mean, Flurry still gives the damage, I guess. Uh, but I'm going to... What should I do with Tressa? I'm just going to so I can plan out my turn better. So we're gonna get one more Black Gale here. At this point, I need to beat the fight within like the next three turns. So.
The other good thing about hired help is you can use some of the cheaper ones to give you different break options, which is yeah. super nice. So. Okay, there we go. We should be good on the spider end. Um, yeah, we should be good on this fight. The boss is super large compared to our characters. That's the art style for most of the bosses, which I kind of like. I think it's a cool aesthetic. Yeah, I like that too. It does seem scary. It does. If I recall correctly, I heard once that the large bosses compared to your player sprites was actually originally a, uh, thing in concept art of the first Final Fantasy game. Uh, but that didn't end up making it. Okay, cool. Uh, but with this round of veteran soldiers, we're going to kill this boss, and time will be in, like, 20 seconds-ish. Uh, it's when I skipped the second cutscene after this boss fight and the credits start, which is... Time. And that is Octopath Traveler. Good job. Sub hour right there. Look that's at that. Sub hour? All right, cool. I wasn't looking at the time. So that's pretty good. I don't know. Oh, you're right over. <laughs> oh, I was right over? Oh, dang. Yeah, that final boss, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, wait. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. It's literally an hour and one second. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good run, though. I'll take that. Especially because my estimate is 115, because as you saw with that last boss, luck exists. So they want to check out this game. The art is beautiful. The gameplay yeah, is, beautiful. is beautiful. They recommend it. You can now get it on PC. You really have no excuse. Yes. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. A big shout out to this community as well. This is a game I like to run a lot, and I definitely encourage if you think you'd like this run to learn it. Um, and for those that sometimes worry about a game being hard, um, the community for this game, people like Jello, Alia is true, especially, um, have made some of like the best resources I think I've ever used in a speed game. Um, we have a bunch of, like, routes, and we have a wiki page for speedrunning, even. Um, and everyone's willing to answer questions, and this is a very easy game to learn, I feel, because even if you don't understand some of the fights that you might go through, or even what character you want to learn at first, um, you can either look it up yourself very easily, or everybody's willing to help you. And big shout-outs to everyone in this community for being a glowing bunch of people. That, similarly to what I said to One Shot, this is one of my favorite games, and uh, when I think of the community along with the game, I, I only have positive thoughts, really. Uh, that's a good idea. This game is very pretty. Um, I guess mm -hmm. if we have time to let the credits play out, um, after stories, you usually get this end card. These credits are eight minutes, by the way, because the whole theme of this game is eight. <laughs> <laughs> the end card so for guess... all the players is so, so beautiful to sketch yeah. for every character when you see all four of their chapters. Well, yes, guess... you can play the demo of this game for free on the store on the Switch store at least. Mm -hmm. And your progress will carry on into the full game. So you can see if you like it first, which is great. Yeah. Um, and this game definitely keeps me going keeps you going for a while. Again, my first casual playthrough was like 80 something hours and then I speed ran it. And this is currently like between all of my different profiles for like practice saves for different games and running different games and my casual plays of different games, this is my most played game on my Switch. I sort of love this game a lot, so I Lovely. definitely would recommend it. I was asking, do you stream this game at all? I do stream a lot, actually. In fact, I got this game, except with Cyrus's game, to a different marathon. 
so I'll probably be streaming some of that. But I stream a lot of games. Um, I have three games in this marathon alone, and they're all pretty different. And I'm a very impressionable person, I like to think. I'm still pretty young, so I think that's I still have that impressionable, uh, impressionable side. So if I see something I think is would be cool to run, I'll pick it up. Um, and that leads to me having a lot of games that I kind of juggle around a bit. Absolutely. And so um, drop the Twitch link in the chat. Go take a follow. Um, Dobby Wan is asking, anyone know how long a run is with all eight of the stories? The all main so stories. there are two categories you might be looking for. One of them, all main stories, record. And this is going off Switch times because I don't know PC times off the top of my head. Current world record for Switch all main stories is like three and a half hours. And for Galdera, which is like the true final boss, the super boss basically, um, is about four hours, 15 minutes. Although your first one will be a lot longer than probably. Uh, so. Relatively short, I would say. Yeah, even with doing a lot of this game, like you can still do full game category well under a quarter of your day. I still haven't completed all eight stories casually, and I'm on like 70 hours. So yeah. there's a mileage with this game from casual to speedrun. Yeah, definitely with cut with cutscene skipping. Oh yeah. So uh, for my game, last game before this one shot, there was a poll for which ending you wanted to pick. If you also want to pick the ending for Silent Hill 2. You can do that by going to the Twitter page, twitter.com slash games done quick and, oh, frame fatales, and voting for your favorite option. I'm a big fan of dogs. Um, also, something pretty cool is that the bosses in the background during the credits are the bosses that you faced pre-credits. So, you're seeing, and it also emulates the last move you, you did on the boss. So, like, in a second, you'll see Matthias's like, pre-fight show up on screen, and then you'll see him die to some hired help. Uh, it's very this cool. Is, this is pretty funny when you kill a boss by reflecting a magic attack at it. Um, in my casual playthrough, I killed a boss by using a cleric skill that we didn't teach in this role called Reflective Veil, where you can reflect one magic attack of whoever character is put on. And the killing blow was like 1,000 damage that I dealt by reflecting like a fire attack. And then when I got into the credits, I saw that boss die to its own fire attack. Awesome. This was the Ophelia single story path that we just did. These credits are long, by the way. Um, <laughs> these credits are med they're, they're mentally, again, due to this game's kind of, they're eight, eight minutes long because Octo. Um, and they it's also just a medley of the uh, mm -hmm. previous, uh, of the uh, kind of like overworld themes of the AR and the title screen. I also highly recommend checking out the soundtrack, which you can find on Spotify and I'm sure other streaming services. There's the soundtrack to the game, and then the composer also did this of some of the tracks. So I definitely recommend checking that out, because the music to this game is completely incredible. Yes. There's also remix albums of the game, um, Break Boost and Break Boost and Beyond, which are both very mm -hmm. good arrangements of a bunch of tracks in the game. And I really like the albums because whenever uh, whenever uh, albums come out, uh, they like to do art of the eight characters in a band together, and it's always very cute. Uh, but the music is also good, obviously. So yeah, here we have... Usually you see the scene right after the one before the credits, if you didn't choose Aphelia first, but since I chose Aphelia first... Um, since I chose Ophelia first, I saw the uh, due to how the structure of this game works. So for the ending, we went back up to this mountain at the beginning. 
in the story, this mountain is kind of important because it's like Ophelia, as I mentioned, isn't blood related to the bishop and the bishop actually took her in at a young age. And this mountain is the first spot where Ophelia opened up to. So uh, after we bring her up, after we bring Liana up there, we get this. And that's everything I have to show in Octopath Traveler. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. I've said everything I need to. <laughs> <laughs>